what's growing at Angleside Farm? Well, we're about to plant a pole barn. Hi everybody, if you look over my shoulder, you see a framing package. And I'm pretty excited, we're finally building our own farm shop. It's gonna be 40 foot wide, 80 foot long, and uh, at least 14 foot tall. Now, I'm a building contractor, uh, it's what I've done for 35 years, and I've never put any of my building videos, I've never made a, building video at all so this is the very first one um, I built a lot of pole barns a lot of houses uh, additions just your general residential construction work is what I've done for 35 years so this is nothing new uh, for me I'm pretty well versed in how to build something but but it is a new building for me so it's my dream shop so to speak and the old saying, you never build them big enough. Well, I've had a 32 by 48 that we built 27 years ago. And my wife told me at the time, uh, Steve, you sure that's gonna be big enough? Well, at that time it was because all I really needed was a woodworking shop and place to put my tractor. Uh, the farming thing has expanded, obviously, and we need a place to put our equipment in. I don't like it sitting outside. So we are building this 40 by 80 farm shop, and yes, I'm thrilled to build it. Now, it's not gonna be a real quick throw it together uh, building. So this, these videos will come to you in stages. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna put them together just yet, but right now we've got the building laid out and we've got the framing package here. So we will start, um, We'll probably start next week, but I'm gonna walk you through it at first and show you the building materials, what we have, and the way that I build things. Now, when I say the way that I build things, um, everybody's got a different way of doing stuff. And probably when I was 20 years old and started uh, helping a local carpenter, he told me, he said, Steve, there's a hundred different ways to build a house and none of them are necessarily wrong. You just need to learn my way. And that's always stuck in my head. So these videos that you were about to watch, you may do them different, but this is my way. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoy what we're building and I hope you find some use in them. The first step is to lay your barn out and I use batter boards at each corner in this case, we'll set them roughly 42 foot apart and 82, 84 foot apart in the lengthwise direction. And then we begin by putting our strings at 40 foot. So that far end, we put the first string measured over here and then put the second one at 40 foot exactly. And then I did the 80 foot long, which would be this string here and then the opposite end the string down there once I've got my building set at 40 by 80 in this particular case then I'll do a diagonal measurement which means I'll go from this corner here to the opposite diagonal corner and from that corner diagonally to this corner and when those two measurements equal each other then your building is square. So the layout and the squareness is very important so you don't get a crooked building. And believe me, I've seen that done a time or two. I'll begin at this end with my layout. And layout simply means that all the measurements are laid out from one end going in the opposite direction. In this case, I will start at that corner and at every eight foot, 
I have this chicken water base that I will lay it out exactly at eight foot and then paint a white circle around that so that the guy that's coming in to bore the holes knows exactly where that needs to be. And then of course, after I get this one marked, I'll go down and I'll mark the next one, so forth and so on, so that the whole building has got these white circles painted on the ground so the guy with the, bore, with the boring machine will be able to bore them exactly where I want them. What they've delivered so far is the two by four 16s. Those are for the purlins. Um, and they're under that white tarp. The purlins are the uh, wood that's fastened to the poles that goes up the sides that you'll fasten your steel to. And a purlin is also the material that you put on top of the trusses uh, that you screw your roof steel to. So we've got 21 six by six 18s for the walls, the eaves. And then we have four 22 foot and then one 26 foot pole. That'll be uh, all the poles that we need for this. And then this other uh, bunk of material, we have two by six 16s for fascia. We have two by eight 16s for our treated skirt board. That's what uh, comes in contact with the ground. We have three 16 foot LVLs. I'm gonna put one overhead door in the eaves so we have to get extra strength. A carrier won't support the trusses in this case because I'm gonna be a 14 foot wide door. And then underneath of the LVLs is our two by 12 16 carriers. The carriers go to the very top. The trusses sit on top of the carriers. And so right now we have the framing package for the, the building itself. The, the trusses are not included yet. I was over there today and they were building them, but I don't want them here on site until I'm ready for them. So when we get this stack of lumber all put in the holes and, and uh, we got our purlins constructed, the building is straight and square and uh, braced, then we will set our, or our uh, then we will set our trusses later on. It's um, mid-November. It's nice weather right now. It's really windy. You can probably hear the wind as I'm speaking, but we're going to get some cold weather. I know that. Uh, it always happens, but we will pick our days, nice days, and, uh, and put this together as the nice days let us. So I marked out where the posts go. And along this gable, there will be four windows. I have the poles set 10 foot apart on a 40 foot wide building. And then on the E side, we have the poles set at eight foot apart. This is the wall that carries all the weight. The only exception being we have a door, overhead door, that's going to go right here. So that being a 14 foot door, we don't span 14 feet with a carrier. We have to use that LVL to span 14 feet. So there's a post that's going to go on the right side that'll have the LVL and then back on layout with that 40 foot um, post hole right there. Continuing on down the eave side, again, posts are going to be every eight foot. On this cable end, I want a 16 foot wide sliding door. I'm sorry about the wind. So coming over 12 foot, made a mark where the edge of the door is going to go. And that'll be a post right there, right on that, right on that edge. Same as right here. So we're all marked out and ready for uh, the auger to come and bore the holes. I'll get a hold of the auger guy and see when he can make it. 
but we're ready. Uh, <laughs> unless it starts snowing, white snow on white paint, I think I might be screwed. I'll have to go get some yellow paint. Today is November 22nd. Yesterday we had some snow. It's all melted and gone away. Tim will be showing up here soon with his bobcat and auger. He'll be drilling these holes to a depth of 48 inches, which is um, where we need to be. Actually, 42 inches is deep enough here in Michigan to uh, meet code as far as uh, getting below the frost. So we're just waiting for Tim to show up, get these holes bored, get some concrete in them, and let them set up. So as Tim is boring the holes, Jeff is following behind with the shovel, flattening out the, uh, the dirt that's in the bottom and then he's taking that rake and stomping it down flat. After we get all these holes bored and uh, flattened out, then we'll start pouring the concrete. This is the last hole. Is this another door? Yep, another door. Nope, we're good, right there. Last hole. So far, we haven't hit any rocks or field tile. I wish I hadn't just said that, because this might just jinx me. Been a real easy dig. That doesn't happen very often. Just like that, 27 holes are all dug to the correct depth, hopefully correct spacing. I'm pretty sure we got that right. So if Tim will load his Bobcat back on the trailer, we'll get some concrete in these holes and let her set up. We got the concrete poured in all the holes. We're going to give it a while to set up, thinking that probably with the nasty weather that's supposed to come, it's probably going to be four or five days. Yeah, well, yeah, probably four days before we get back at it. So the concrete ought to be set up real good. Very happy with the way that turned out. Holes are 48 inches deep, and then uh, concrete's probably 10 inches or so at least. Uh, 10 inches of concrete, maybe a foot in each hole. So the post should be well supported. So we're gonna do this video of building our farm shop in sections. Part one is this, it's the uh, layout and the dirt work. We'll be starting next with the poles, purlins, carriers, that type of stuff, that'll be part two. I just think if I put all these videos into one, it's gonna be a hour long video and people might lose interest. So we're gonna chop it up into, into sections. Um, the dig went very well today. Once we got through that first layer of dark, rich soil and hit that sand, just it was just easy digging. No rocks, didn't hit a single rock, didn't hit any field tile, so it, it, it went really well. Um, if you have any questions about what we did today, please uh, drop them in the comments and um, I'll either answer them or if it's something that I can show you in the next video, I'll do that. I'm Like I said earlier, I'm not much of a teacher. I've been doing this type of work for 35 years, but I'm just not much of a teacher. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that I can. If you're not yet a subscriber, 
and you want to follow along and see what we're doing here and you want to see the rest of these videos of building our farm shop, hit that subscribe button and uh, get the notification of when our next videos are coming up. So with that, I want to say thank you very much for watching and until the next time, take care and God bless.